ferment has settled down, it's time to dry hop. Uh, I do have, can you see here? It's different from yesterday when I showed you the bottom, even though it's probably hard to see without it. It looks thicker. It's time to shut it off and we'll get it, get rid of it. Um, I'm not going to keep this for another brew because it just doesn't happen to work out properly. But we're going to try to shut it off and see what happens. I don't know. Anything could happen. We're, we're at a pretty high pressure up here. Um, by what it's saying at the top, oh, you can't quite see, is uh, nearly 10 psi. I know that that's wrong because um, when I hooked up my gas, as I've said before in earlier videos, as I hooked it up, I think that's way over 10 psi and I think things could get dangerous. So hopefully turning the butterfly valve off, which I just did. And hopefully just unscrewing this, there's going to be some pressure. I think this is going to make a mess. Because I reckon there's going to be the same pressure. Or well, I don't reckon. I know there's going to be the same pressure in the bottom down here. I don't know if uh, it's going to spurt everywhere or... Because I haven't done this before. But I'm going to turn around. I know that there's going to have to be some sort of release of pressure. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to, hold, I'm going to have to hold it at the top. Yeah, there is going to be, oh, there you go. Oh, it wasn't too bad. It's, it's uh, dribbling over. There you go. Bang. And I could have hold, held onto it, of course. But I expected that to spurt everywhere, but it didn't. Now, if I had wanted to keep this, which I actually don't, I would have kept the lid, which I do have over there, and put the lid straight on it, like I would have had the, head, you know, the lid uh, sanitised and put it straight on there. But I'm not going to now, because I'm not interested in that. I'm going to tip this out, fill it up and try and dry hop through it. Because that's one of their, uh, you know, recommendations or whatever. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to grab my, oh hang on, we have it here, but my hand's covered in yeast. Uh, you know, the old bottle full of star sand, and I'm going to stick that right up the door. All right, here we go. There you go. And that smells awesome. This is the thing that's going to freak me out. It's going to be a little bit weird. And I, oh, you probably can't see the bloody gas thing. All I've done is stuck my carbonation cap, but it handles a gas and it handles a beer cap. So I know how it handles both, right? And I just used it before, earlier, to thing. I'm going to put that in the bottom. Like that. Excuse me while I use things. And you can't see my gas bottle down here. Well, you probably can if I do that. So there's my gas bottle. That's all it is is doing coming straight up the gas tube into this. And I'm just going to turn on, on, on slightly to try and flush the oxygen out. Look, there's a lot of things I could say about flushing oxygen out of uh, things and kegs and that because it's a very hard thing to do properly and a lot of the times it doesn't work but anyway I'm going to turn it, oh I'm going to turn it on briefly oh god that smells good there's CO2 going into that bottle can you have smell it I'll turn it down a little bit hang on you can't do it much stronger than that anyway I don't believe much of that is going to work technically but anyway, alright, we're flushed with CO2, we're in there, it's done up tight, that's um, 80 grams worth of Citra and 20 grams worth of Ella, or it could be a little bit more, we're just going to see what happens though, eh? it's going to be a little bit weird I reckon, oh. there you go, that looks a little bit strange doesn't it? You can see the uh, hops trying to expand. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. We can, see, you can still see it going up. And oh, look at that. The Krausen's actually bigger than it's ever been. Here we go, only like a minute later. You 
anything else. Still see there is things moving up there. Interesting. All right, I think I've broken it. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like it's just all stuck down in there. Now, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. What happened earlier was the pressure built up a little up there, and I let the as I uh, let the pressure out a bit. There was a bit of a blowback, blow up from the blow up, <laughs> but a bit of stuff from the bottom bottle sort of went up into the into the beer or wort or whatever you want to call it at the moment. Um, so I'm thinking what I might do is pump it up with gas again, with the gas bottle. Just put it up, the pressure up a little bit high, and then do it again and see if it blows a little bit more up in there. There goes my heater. All right, I've put 20 psi in there. Now, I don't know if this is going to work or not again. Now I'm going to let this pressure out. We'll see if we get another puff of. No, it didn't work the second time. Oh, there is a tiny little bit of movement. Oh, it's getting bubbles in the middle here. Yeah, there is a bit of movement. Something's happening. So it has actually worked. That was just after that one time. I've just filled it up with gas again. I'm going to do it again. My camera battery is just about to run flat, so I might not film it. But I might just do that again and try and get some more of that hops up there. At least I know now that there is contact of some sort it was a bit hard to tell before here we are five days after dry hop which is a lot longer than well not a lot longer a day or two longer than i usually leave it these days but uh you know anywhere between three four five days is enough for pellets uh as you can see well, the yeast is dropping out by itself well and truly it's cleared it's a bit hard to see on here but it's cleared right up uh, i can see into the beer i don't know if it's going to come across on the phone it's a bit of yeast here look i could take that off which i probably will uh shut off that uh bottom because it's not like anything else is going to fall into it anymore and i can take the bottom uh bottle off and empty it which I will. Uh, but besides that, it's time to crash I know, and get it down cold. Uh, a couple of days, I'll be drinking it. I might this. I know this pressure is probably going to be a bit high. I'm just going to let a little bit out. I know that this isn't reading right, and it was about there. That's about 10 psi. So I'm going to leave it about there. For now, crash it, see what happens to the pressure. I know there's still plenty in there. I can feel it's still hard. Uh, I'll just crush it down and then I'll end up putting my gas on there. And I'm not sure, we'll find out and see how carved up it is before I put the gas on. So I'll, I will chill it first. We'll see, we'll pour a beer, we'll see how it goes. It's gonna be a bit rough. Uh, out my little beer dispenser thing I'm going to use. But we'll see how it goes. I know, you know, my normal beers are about 12 psi in a keg, but this is in a different situation and without the same sort of beer lines um, and tap. So, anyway, there you go. So, 100 grams of uh, hop matter is a bit much. But as I said, you could take that out. I'm actually thinking of buying a spare bottle so I can just swap out a clean one. Uh, you know, keep the yeast from the first one, maybe. You know, the first go and then swap it out or whatever. Anyway, let's crush this baby. Uh, I usually go down to about two for crushing. Two degrees. But that's up to you. You can go to just do your serving temp if you want. Just take a little longer. It's only the next day. I only took it down to four degrees uh, simply because I want to surf at that temperature and I don't know, I just decided to do it to four instead of my usual two. That's fogging up of course because the air's a little bit warmer out here. 
a little bit of yeast on the side. That looks a lot worse on camera than it does in real life, but of course that's what happens. I have closed that bottom off as bottle off as I did last video. I just haven't taken the bottle off yet. Anyway, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Is there any floaties? Doesn't look like there's much there. Things will drop out a bit more in a couple of days, of course. But we're going to try it. See how, because uh, we're taking it from the top, see how clear we can get the first beer. Um, I might just take a little bit out of the line because, you know, clear the line because I've taken some samples along the way, or a sample along the way. So I'll clear the line first, then we'll try a little drink out of it. I'm not sure if it's going to be carved or not. I don't think it is. But I'm not going to put any pressure on it just yet. If there's enough there, that's enough to push out a beer. Alright, I'll check this beer, short beer line on. I'll clear the line. There's a bit of star sand, plus, you know, as I said, there might be a bit of gunk in the, in the tube. Tiny little drop like that. And it will take a beer, eh? Doesn't look carved yet, so I'm going to have to put some gas on it. It is under pressure still. But, uh... Well then again, it's a little bit of fizz in it. Still a touch cloudy, a touch. <laughs> Still a bit hazy, but you've got to remember what I put in there. There's 100 grams of dry hop as well. And it's only been, you know, yesterday since I put the, the fridge on. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet, I don't think. Oh, it smells good. And actually, can you pick that up? There is bubbles. I know this, I'll say that's a dirty glass, but it's not really. So it's still got to clear a little bit. I might actually put the gas on it now. Put it on the usual. No, I might put it on ten. I usually put it on twelve. My you know a normal keg. I might try ten. Um, I'm just not sure how it's going to pour out of my little. Uh, beer line here because <laughs> I'm not going to set up another one just to try it unless I really have to um, but oh my god it's tasting sensational Citra Bomb it's nearly one of those bloody New England things and it will be uh, interesting to see how much it does clear because I'm not going to put any gelatin in or anything like that there's a lot of dry hop. I wasn't going to do a video today. This is 24 hour, uh, 48 hours after cold crashing, or the start of the cold crash. Um, so it takes a day to get cold. Uh, and yesterday I put the gas on. You might have seen it on the video. I keep looking at the wrong bit where the lens is. But anyway, I poured a little one just before and I thought, wow, that's carved already. So it's only been on the gas one day been brewed two weeks ago and I was a bit slack with the brew I could have rushed it along a bit uh, longer but the weekend got in the way for a few things but anyway I'll stop yakking now, it comes out pretty fast from this tap because it's only a short line but if you look at that look at that <laughs> oh, and the aroma is unbelievable but that's not going to disappear that as you can see that's a creamy head gotta watch got a light on it's dark in the garage and cold um, but yeah look it's not really going anywhere fast That's awesome. I'll do a better video once it's cleared a little bit. As I said, it's only been two days. Cold crashing. The, look, the lacing's there and everything. It's, it's already there. It's very drinkable now. But we'll give it a couple of days. And that is just hop haze. That's not yeast or anything. I don't know if you can see it in here. The light's on the wrong side, isn't it? Here we are nearly three weeks later. Nearly. Um, I'll pour a quick beer out of it. Like so. 
I'm shock and pull holding it like this. Didn't hold the glass very well, did I? There we go. It's quite it's not showing up quite as clear as it is here on camera. But it's very hazy from the hops. Uh, 100 um, grams worth of hops too that I dry hop with. Anyway, cheers. I've had a little bit of it, as you can see. The aroma is awesome. Uh, the flavour is great. Might be a bit too much for some people. This is a very hoppy, like an XPA. That's what they call them these days, or you know. Even a, a New England type thing. Um, but actually, not, not really like a New England type thing because I like a bit of bitterness in it, so it has got a bit of bitterness. But it has that full hop flavour as well, as you'd expect from uh, all the hops I've thrown in it. And it's about only about 5.2%. But I really like these sort of beers. As I said, they're a bit much for some, but I'm a bit of a hophead. But I think this sort of system it will be great. Uh, for summer lagers and things like that where you don't have to muck around with them too much um, I think that dry hop went fine. It doesn't look like it in the video, but I think I Think it did I think it most of that went up and then settled back down again, and it makes sense that it did um, I Think it uh, yeah, it'd be much easier with a bit less hop, but that was a big dry hop um, Just from the aroma and looking back on the videos, I wasn't sure at the time, but when I look back at the videos closely, it did look like most of them went up. And had, or at least all had contact with uh, wort or wort or beer, it might have even been at that time. Um, and came back down. Some may not have. Uh, it's hard to tell. I'll have to uh, tag, a, tag a hot pellet and <laughs> see if it goes up and, and, and goes down again. Um, what else? That's about it. I think it's good. I think it traps in flavour and aroma more than the usual way. As I said, it'd be great for lagers. I, you know, I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a problem with it. As long as you've got the space to, to store it, it is a big unit. They are bringing out. They are released in America too. Apparently, they had a big order from America a couple of months ago, so they're probably lurking around. And they are bringing out especially designed fridges for them too, which will be great for those people that don't. You know, do ferment after ferment after ferment. If they like to do a ferment and have it sit there in the fridge for a while, serve from it, it's perfect. Um, you know, it's not going to fit everyone's style and brewing styles, and I don't know how often I'll use it. I'm going to try a few more on it just to see how, it, you know, how everything pans out. Um, and I'm going to try the, uh, as I've probably mentioned more than once, uh, fermenting under pressure where you should be able to ferment at hotter and not get off flavours, and so... You know, a bonus of that is it ferments faster. So, you know, I've heard different theories that uh, you don't know till you try them. Lagers in a week, you know, ales in a couple of days. And it makes sense. It's a lot, a lot of commercial breweries do. It's good. I'd like to get a collection bottle. Bottles with a, maybe a gas post on it and a relief valve. That way you can fill it up with hops and purge it before you open the valve you could screw it on put the gas on purge then you'd know you weren't letting oxygen in uh, anyway cheers get onto it if you think it's gonna fit you